We already have somebody who's reviewed and revised the memo. We are going to be combining the revisions and then sending the memo back to him for a final review. So the first thing that we need to do is combine the revisions from a support document with our SAM project file. And we want to show the changes in the original document. So I'm going to come up here to the review tab and this is where you're going to find all the information if you want to combine documents or track your changes. In this case we're wanting to combine our changes so I'm going to come over here to the compare and we're going to come down here and this is where you're going to find combine revisions from multiple documents into two documents. We have our original document here so we're just going to browse. We already have this is the one we're looking at. Say OK. Our revised document, I'm going to browse for that. And that is in my downloaded, my downloads area. I want to combine it with the Sanderson document. So it's right here, support Sanderson, open and we want to remember to show the changes in the original document. So right down here is where our show changes in original document is located at in our box. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to say do you want to let you know that you can only store one set of them and I want to keep them in my original document. So you can see now I have here a comment so I could see my comments here. I've also got some over here. So we have our combined documents here. We want to display all markups. So right here, right now, we're just seeing the simple markup. We want to show all the markups so we can see all the changes that everybody has made to our document. We want to accept the first track change from Brian Sanderson. So right here, we've got our Notice it's underlined so you can see that something's different. This lets us know Brian Anderson made this change and we want to accept that. So we can right click on that and accept insertion. So we've accepted that change into our document. We want to reject the next track change. We don't want to have improvements here. So we can right click here and we can reject that. We want to accept the next track change from uh, Rosa Val Valdez, which adds revisions. You can see when I put my mouse over it, it lets me know who that change is from. I can right click on it and accept that one. And then it wants us to accept the remaining changes. So right up here you can see uh, accept, reject. So if I click on Accept right down here. I can just tell it to accept all the changes so I don't have to go through each individual one. So I'm going to accept all changes. Our next step um, we want to insert the text Game Studio in our to line so that the memo is addressed to all Boulder Game Studio employees. So we're just going to click our mouse right up here after after Boulder and add in Game Studio. You'll notice it's in the underlined version. It's Since we're combining the documents, this lets everybody know that, hey, this is a change that we've made. After we've entered our Game Studio there, we are going to change the markup back to Simple Markup, and then we want to turn off track changes. So we just need to click on the track changes to toggle it off. Number four, we want to insert a custom column chart in the blank paragraph below the December game updates table to respond to Brian Sanderson's request. So you can see here we've got this comment. If you click on it, you can see the comments and he's asking us to insert a chart. So close that. We're going to click right underneath in the blank paragraph below our December game updates and we're going to insert a clustered column chart. So up here on the insert tab, 
Over here we have charts. We want the custom column, clustered column. Let's say OK. We want to take this table here and we're just going to select all of it and we're going to copy. Come over here to our Excel spreadsheet here and paste. That lets us know it isn't the same size, but that's OK. So we pasted the information from that chart into in, from our table into the chart here. We want to remove the total data series from our chart. So right here, I'm going to highlight that column and then delete. And then I'm going to close my chart spreadsheet window. We want to delete the chart title here because we don't need it. So I can just highlight it and delete it there to get rid of it. We want to add number of updates as our primary vertical access. So with our chart still selected, we can come up here to chart design, add chart element, and we're going to add an axis title. We want primary and we want that primary vertical. Sorry, let me undo that here. I'm going to add chart element, axis title, primary vertical, and our text for this is going to be number of updates. We're going to open a workbook, the support platforms spreadsheet, and I'm going to come down here to my file explorer button. I'm going to go to my downloads because that's where it's at, and I want the platforms Excel spreadsheet here. So I'm going to double click to open that. So I've got this spreadsheet here. I'm going to enable editing so I can mess around with it if I need to. We want to paste our Excel data as a link in the blank paragraph in the market update pl platform sketch section on page two. So right here, mark market update. I can click down here. And this is where I want to enter it. I am going to copy it as a link from my data. So I'm going to open up that spreadsheet again. I'm going to copy that range. Come back over here to my Word document and I'm going to paste as a link. Once I have that selected, I now want to break the link. So when you add a link, that means changes made in one document is going to appear in the other. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to come up here to the File tab and come to Info. And right over here in our Backstage View is where you'll see the Edit Links to Files. So we're going to select that. Make sure that worksheet's selected here. And we're just going to break the link. Say OK back arrow, back to our document. Then we want to close our Excel workbook and we are ready for step seven. Brian Sanderson has also made a comment here on our chart that he wants us to make it a little more interesting to look at. So we're going to click in here to select the chart. Up here in our chart design tab is where we can make changes to our chart. We want to change the pie chart to a 3D pie chart. So over here under the change chart type, we're going to make select the 3D pie chart and say OK. We also want to add the style one. So right up here we have style one. And then we want to change the colors. So over here change colors and we want to change the colors to the colorful palette. We want to add a chart title now. So here is add chart element. We have our chart title area. We want it above the chart and we want it to say developers per platform. And then we also want a legend at the top of our chart. So we're going to come back here to the add chart element and we want a legend so that people know what they're looking at and we want it at the top instead of the bottom of our chart and we want to add a border. So over here under the format tab is where you're going to see the shape outline and on our shape outline 
we want to add a dark gray text to border. The very last thing that we're going to do here is insert a calendar three quick, quick table in the blank paragraph at the end of our document. So we're just going to come down here, put our insertion point at the very end of our document, come up here to the insert tab, and right here under tables, down here at the very bottom there are some quick tables. These are tables that are already built in and ready to go. You just have to select them. We want the calendar three quick table. We want to show December. After December 1, we're going to put our insertion point to the right of our 1 and hit our enter key. And then we're going to enter the text smartphone updates released. So that people can look at this calendar and they know on December 1st, smartphone updates are going to be released. So we are now ready to save our document and close it. And let's go back to our mind tab and we're going to drag or not drag. I'm just going to come up and find my document here and I'm going to submit it for grading. And now let's look at our graded report and see what happened. And 